If you've been following battery tech for the past decade, you've heard the solid state battery story before. Toyota promised them by 2025. Samsung said they were just around the corner. QuantumScape's stock soared on promises of a revolutionary battery. And yet, here we are, still driving cars with the same lithium ion tech. And if the sliding deadlines weren't enough of a headache, the term solid state battery has become a marketing buzzword and is quickly losing meaning as a result. But here's the thing. 2025 and 2026 might actually look a little different. Companies aren't just filing patents anymore. They're opening factories. They're putting innovative new batteries in actual vehicles. Mercedes just drove 749 miles on a single charge with one. MG is taking pre-orders for a car with a semi-solid state battery for under $15,000. So is this finally it? Are solid state batteries, or at least their close relatives, finally here? Or are we just being sold another round of hype? I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. This video is brought to you by Incogni. Before we dive into who's shipping what, we need to address a credibility crisis. Remember our investigation into Yoshino's so-called solid-state battery? Well, when the company Tech Insights cracked it open, they found liquid electrolyte in both the anode and cathode. So was it not a solid-state battery? Well, yes and no. Solid-state battery has become kind of an umbrella term. What you're probably picturing is an all-solid-state battery or an ASSB, which means there's zero liquid. However, there's also semi-SSBs, where less than 10% of the electrolyte is liquid. Less than 5% means it's a quasi-SSB. The catch? These definitions aren't universally agreed upon. As QuantumScape's Tim Holm told me, each company has their own thresholds. Some don't even base it on liquid content, they base it on performance instead. Have you ever been in the middle of eating ice cream only to notice that it's actually labeled as frozen dairy dessert? <laughs> it's a lot like that, except we don't have a USDA equivalent for solid state batteries. So here's my take. I'm not sure it matters that much. What matters is the user experience. Does it charge faster? Give you more range? Is it safer? If a battery charges to 80% in 10 minutes and won't catch fire when it's punctured, I don't care if it has 3% liquid electrolyte or zero. The terms are becoming meaningless, and combined with ever sliding deadlines, we've got a real credibility crisis. Even if this boom of prototypes and pilot factories is real, commercialization still lies beyond what experts call development hell. ID Tech X's vice president for research, who's Dr. James Edmondson, told Forbes while progress is generally being made, he thinks real commercialization is still years away. In terms of seeing them in larger production volume vehicles, we wouldn't expect that until early 2030s. Even by 2035, we are predicting just over 100 gigawatt hours of capacity for solid state batteries, compared with our prediction for the overall EV car market at around 3,800 gigawatt hours in the same year. At this point, it's a necessity to be skeptical about any and all SSB claims. So let's look at what's actually real, what's close, and what's still just promises. Let's start with what you can actually get your hands on, or at least pre-order right now. Well, depending on what part of the world you're in. Chinese company SAIC Motor officially opened up pre-sales for the all-new MG4 model this past August. This makes it among the first mass-produced vehicles to sport a semi-solid state battery. And yes, it's a semi-solid state battery with a reported 5% liquid electrolyte, not a full all-solid state battery. SAIC claims its battery successfully passed safety tests, including a three-direction needle penetration test without any smoke. But it's also not stated, at least not in English, if those are in-house or third-party tests. There's not a lot of reporting about what the exact stats of the battery are, but based on information revealed during a July media event, the semi-solid state battery will have a range of about 537 kilometers or 333 miles and an energy density of about 180 watt hours per kilogram. That said, I still haven't heard a peep about how fast it charges. The MG4 has a handful of versions, but it only looks like the most expensive option, the Ancient, will include the semi-solid state battery and it will retail for the pretty reasonable 102,800 yuan, or about $14,290. I don't wanna overhype this in part because the Anjin version hasn't delivered yet, but it's nice to see that at least some kind of solid state battery tech-based car making it to commercialization's finish line. In the case of this car, it sounds like this is more about safety benefits. Then there's Mercedes-Benz partnering with Factorial Energy. Factorial is a new face for the channel. In 2023, the company opened an SSB plant in Massachusetts. Its lineup includes the Fest quasi-solid state battery and the Solstice all-solid state battery. I can't find anything stating if this plant will be producing the Fest, the Solstice, or both. Though keep in mind that the plant predates the Solstice announcement. 
Mercedes just completed a long distance test with its EQS model equipped with Factorial's solid state battery. And the result was impressive. 749 miles on a single charge. That's not a lab result under perfect conditions. That's a real car on real roads. Mercedes says the test EQS used Factorial's Solstice all solid state battery technology. These aren't vaporware. They're functioning vehicles proving the technology works outside controlled lab environments. But they're also not quite the revolutionary leap the hype machine promised us for the past decade. So what about the companies claiming they're just months away from mass production? We'll dive into the major automakers that have opened up pilot plants with bold promises in a moment. But first, while we're talking about things that you can actually control, let's talk about controlling your personal data. Today's sponsor, Incogni, can help you get to the source of the problem and restore some of your privacy. Data brokers collect and sell your personal details to people who might use it against you. We're talking about some real threats like identity theft, scams, and stalking because they can't harm you if they can't find you. Your home address, phone number, and relatives' information are being sold online, and criminals use this data to take out fraudulent loans or track people down in real life. I signed up for Incogni, gave them the legal right to work on my behalf, and then just sat back and relaxed. It's really that easy. Their custom removals feature is really cool. You can flag any websites where your data is exposed and they'll get it removed. I've seen a dramatic drop in where my information is showing up online. If you want to take back control of who has your personal information, give Incogni a try. Use code UNDECIDED at the link below and get 60% off an annual plan. Thanks to Incogni and to all of you for supporting the channel. Now back to those pilot plants and their promises. Now let's look at who's getting very close. Several major players have pilot production lines running which means that they're past the lab stage, but not yet at mass production. Pilot plants are the final gate before commercial production. QuantumScape partnered with Volkswagen Group to put its QSE5 solid state battery in the new Ducati V21L electric racing motorcycle. The QSE5 has a 844 watt hour per liter energy density, charges from 10% to 80% in around 12 minutes, and Volkswagen says it's capable of race level power outputs. The all-electric V21L had 150 horsepower and hit 170 miles per hour on the Mugello circuit. The QSE5s are being produced via the Cobra separator system, which we explored last year, which heat treats their battery's oxide separator 25 times faster. I can't find independent info on what subspecies of solid state battery the QSE5 is, but what matters is whether the performance and timelines match the promises. QuantumScape initially aimed for commercial production in 2024, and in 2025, they began shipping samples to launch customers, with field testing starting in 2026. That's progress, but field testing isn't commercial production, and the timeline keeps sliding a little bit. Next up is Solid Power and BMW working on an all solid state battery for the new BMW i7. Solid Power clearly states that this battery is an all solid state battery. The company has worked with BMW since 2016, and this particular solid state battery is sulfide based. The big advantage? Sulfide solid state batteries can be produced with industry standard roll to roll manufacturing equipment. This could be critical because finding cost effective ways to manufacture solid state batteries at scale remains an ongoing challenge. Solid Power claims it can manufacture solid state batteries 15 to 35% cheaper than competitors. However, BMW and Solid Power's own press releases note that further development steps are required. Not exactly confidence inspiring, especially when Solid Power was saying in 2020 that they were hoping to sell batteries by 2021. We've heard these optimistic timelines before. While we're on Solid Power, let's talk about its partner SK On, one of South Korea's powerful family owned conglomerates known as Chables. SK On has its own all solid state battery and claims it can mass produce it using warm, isostatic, press free, or WIP technology. This technique reduces porosity and increases density suggesting SK-ON's solid-state batteries have a ceramic core, though that's not clearly stated. WAP applies uniform pressure to electrodes at elevated temperatures, improving energy density and performance while minimizing heat generation. And the results? An energy density of 800 watt-hours per liter, which is twice what lithium-ion, nickel, manganese, cobalt batteries offer. However, cell sealing proved difficult to automate, so SK-ON tapped solid power for help. Things seem to be working out, and they opened a 50,000 square foot pilot plant in Daejeon, South Korea in September, and moved their release date from 2030 to 2029. They actually moved it up. Surprising given the history of sliding deadlines, although 2029 is still four years away. Then there's Nissan, claiming it'll have all solid state battery vehicles by 2028. The company is developing in-house batteries, but partnered with US-based LiCap for cathode electrode production process technology. The battery stats are unclear. 
We can make some educated guesses, maybe by looking at LiCap's numbers, but that's just a guess. Nissan reached out to LiCap for its activated dry electrode technology, which manufactures electrodes without solvents. Ordinarily, solvents meld battery layers together for better charge flow, but manufacturers have to wait for electrodes to dry, then recapture the solvents for reuse. Both processes are time-consuming and expensive. Nissan figures skipping these steps will significantly reduce manufacturing costs, but the company only opened a pilot plant earlier this year, so we'll be waiting a while to see if that's true. That's a lot of different approaches to solid-state batteries coming down the pipeline. Surely one of them has to make it, right? Well, before any of us get too excited, let's talk about what they're not telling you, because there are serious manufacturing challenges at play that could delay or even derail these timelines. First off, temperature sensitivity. Some solid electrolytes only perform well at elevated temperatures or suffer when it's humid, which isn't ideal in the real world. In colder climates, this necessitates the need for heavy, energy-intensive internal heating systems, and these eat into the energy savings, making the car heavier, which harms your range and drives up the overall costs. This isn't a minor inconvenience so much as a fundamental challenge. It affects where and how these batteries can be deployed. Plus, a paper from Clemson University's Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering points out, life cycle is still an issue. This is where dendrites come back into the picture again, because they get bigger every time a battery is used. The solid state battery buzz makes it sound like this is a solved problem. As we've seen, there's a lot of strategies for managing dendrites, but they're still a concern. They can pierce through a solid electrolyte just like they do with a liquid one, causing internal short circuits. Different materials have their own way of handling this, but no approach has completely eliminated the problem. Less dramatic, but no less important, is the solid electrolyte interface or SEI layer. This is a metallic layer that builds up around the electrodes with repeated use. It simultaneously eats away at the electrolyte to build itself, while making it harder for lithium ions to pass from one electrode to the other. It usually drops the battery's capacity and overall just harms the performance. And much like dendrites, there are ways to manage this, but none of them are easy or cheap. There's also the challenge of maintaining good contact between the solid electrolyte and the electrodes. Unlike liquid electrolytes that flow and maintain contact naturally, Solid materials can separate or develop gaps during charging and discharging cycles. This increases resistance and reduces performance over time. Some companies are using various pressing techniques or composite materials to address this, but it adds complexity and cost to manufacturing. And that's all before we get into the difficulty of mass production. Even if we solve all those challenges, and right now that's a big if, can we implement them efficiently and cost effectively at scale? That remains to be seen. Manufacturing solid-state batteries requires different processes, different equipment, and different quality measures than conventional lithium-ion production. The industry has decades of experience optimizing lithium-ion. Solid-state is starting from scratch. Each company we've discussed is forging its own path to viable solid-state batteries. Some are betting on sulfides, others on oxides or polymers. Some are going for pure solid-state, and others are accepting small amounts of liquid electrolyte as a pragmatic compromise. This diversity of approaches is both encouraging and concerning. It's encouraging because it means lots of smart people are attacking the problem from different angles. It's concerning because it suggests that there isn't a clear winner yet, and some of these bets just won't pay off. So where does this leave solid-state batteries? It's challenging to separate the hype from facts. And how many of these solid-state batteries will really truly be all solid-state when you crack them open? As promising as these techniques and pilot plants can be, there's still nothing solid to hang on to just yet. The sheer variety of technologies under the umbrella of the term solid state battery means that it's really difficult to give the technology a singular rating on NASA's technological readiness or TRL scale. Some of these, like the new developments from Huawei and DICP, are still on the lab bench, putting them at a five at best. The various auto manufacturers are plowing ahead with tech that's passed a real world demo or two, Others are so confident in their tech that they're at the pilot plant stage. Flight-proven systems like this would mean a TRL of 7 or 8. I think by now it's clear that the deadlines like 2028 or 2030 are more aspirations than promises. It's very possible that all these deadlines are just going to be pushed forward yet again as the commercialization process hits more road bumps. After all, a pilot plant is only a test, and sometimes you fail a test. It's all part of the process and completely normal. And yet, the challenges of mass producing a true solid state battery and a history of people saying, the next year or two, we promise, leaves me a little more skeptical. 
I really hope I'm wrong and the next few years do see a dawning of the solid state battery age, but I'm not holding my breath. Again, these commercialization road bumps are part of the process. On the other hand, who cares if a battery is not, in fact, fully solid state, so long as it does what it says on the tin. If a battery really can charge to 80% in less than 12 minutes while maintaining a decent cycle life and energy density, then I'm not gonna get hung up on whether it's a true all solid state battery or a semi solid state battery. The MG4 proves that solid state adjacent technology can reach consumers at reasonable prices. The Mercedes test proves that range improvements are real and substantial. The pilot plants prove that major manufacturers are committed enough to invest serious money. All that's to say, you better believe it that we'll be revisiting these companies in 2028 and 2030 to see if any of these promises materialize. For now, I'd say we're in the cautiously optimistic but maintaining healthy skepticism zone. <laughs> Not the revolution we were promised a decade ago, but meaningful progress towards better, safer batteries is happening. But what do you think? Are solid state batteries going to actually happen and become another great option for energy storage? Jump in the comments and let me know. You can also check out the extended cut of this video over on Patreon. If you'd like to join, the link's in the description. Be sure to listen to my follow-up podcast, Still To Be Determined, while we'll keep this conversation going. Keep your mind open, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.